Eastern Spain Television. Ours it is. Good evening and welcome to Spring Global on Western Spring Television. In the headlines, INEX suspends election in Enugu East Senatorial District over a murder of Labour Party candidate. Poland delivers first four Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine on anniversary of Russian invasion. And suspected Islamist militants kill at least 12 people in central Mali. My name is Tunde Ido. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has suspended election in Enugu East Senatorial District. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu made this known at a media briefing in Abuja. According to him, the election in the Senatorial District, earlier slated for Saturday, February 25, 2023, has been moved to March 11, 2023. Professor Yakubu said the postponement in the district, which covers six local government areas, became necessary with a murder of the Labour Party's senatorial candidate for the district, Oyibo Chuku. He said the Labour Party reached out to the electoral body to convey its intention to provide a replacement and go ahead with the poll at the new date. Mr. Chuku and his personal assistant were assassinated on Wednesday when hoodlums attacked them and set their vehicle ablaze in the Eke Ek Otu Amechi Akwanyawu area of Inugu. Professor Yakubu said the electoral mar materials for the election in the senatorial district will remain in the custody of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, till the new date. The second issue is the unfortunate incident involving the candidate of the Labour Party in Inugu State. I can confirm that we have now received a formal communication from the political party informing the commission of the death of its candidate for Inugu East Senatorial District. The party also conveyed its intention to participate in the election for that constituency by replacing its deceased candidate. This request is in line with the provisions of the law. For clarity, I would like to quote Vavatim Section 34, subsection 1 of the Electoral Act 2022, which says, and I quote, if after the time for the delivery of nomination paper and before the commencement of poll, a nominated candidate dies, the Chief National Electoral Commissioner shall, being satisfied of the fact of death, countermand the poll in which the deceased candidate was to participate, and the commission shall appoint some other convenient date for the election within 14 days." Unquote. In the meantime, the River State Police Command has arrested a member of the House of Representatives, Chin Yiri Igwe, with 491100 dollars cash. Mr. Igwe is the People's Democratic Party PDP lawmaker representing Port Hackett to federal constituency. Rivers Police Spokesperson Grace Iringe Okoko said the lawmaker was also apprehended with a list for the distribution of the money. The police spokesperson said Assistant Inspector General in charge of elections, Abutu Yaru, had ordered swift interrogation of the lawmaker and subsequent arrangement in court. The police asked all candidates and political parties to comply strictly with provisions of the 2022 Electoral Act and other laws guiding elections. The development comes less than 24 hours to the presidential and national assembly elections. Moving to Europe, Poland has delivered the first four Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine and Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki says the country will send more soon. Speaking at a joint news conference with Ukrainian counterpart Volodymyr Zelensky in Kyiv, the Polish leader said the tanks will help protect Ukrainian troops on the battlefield and more will be on the way in a few days. He also told reporters that 60 PT-91 tanks will be sent to Ukraine in the coming days. On his part, 
Mr. Zelensky promised that Ukraine will do everything to achieve victory a year after Russia's full-scale invasion. At a separate ceremony, the Ukrainian president paid tribute to his troops on invasion anniversary and handed out medals to emotional families in Kiev. Earlier, Mr. Zelensky released a message of defiance to his people, vowing that his country will defeat everyone. Рік тому у цей день, з цього ж місця, близько сьомої ранку я звернувся до вас з короткою заявою, тривалістю всього 67 секунд. В ній пролунали дві найголовніші і тоді і зараз речі – те, що Росія почала проти нас повномасштабну війну, і те, що ми сильні, ми готові до всього. Ми всіх переможемо, бо ми – Це Україна. Так розпочалась 24 лютого 2022 року. Найдовший день нашого життя. Найважчий день нашої новітньої історії. Meanwhile, a year after Russia's invasion, ceremonies are taking place across Ukraine, including Bucha, where Russian forces were accused of committing crimes against humanity. The occasion has not been mentioned on Russian state television, but former President Dmitry Medvedev says Russia should push Ukrainian forces back to the Polish border. In the United Kingdom, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak leads a minute, national minute silence in support of Ukraine. On his part, King Charles condemned Russia's attack and praised the remarkable courage of the Ukrainian people. In the meantime, the United States has marked a year since Russia invaded Ukraine by announcing a new range of sanctions against Russia. The restrictions target banks and suppliers of defense equipment, both within Russia and worldwide. Specifically, the U.S. said it wants to stop those helping Russia exploit loopholes to get sanctioned materials. The White House insisted it will continue to stand with Ukraine for, for as long as it takes and hold Russia accountable for its war of aggression. The U.S. also announced $550 million will be supplied to both Ukraine and neighboring Moldova to strengthen their energy infrastructure. This comes days after U.S. President Joe Biden flew into Kiev for a surprise visit and held talks with his Ukrainian counterpart, Volodymyr Zelensky. Sustained with the Russian-Ukraine war, Moldova's leaders have rejected Russian claims that Ukraine is planning to attack the country's breakaway pro-Russian territory and call for calm. Russia's defense ministry alleged that Ukrainian saboteurs dressed as Russian troops will attack from Transnistria to provide a pretext for a Ukrainian invasion. Moldova has warned for weeks that Russia is plotting to seize power. Moldovian President Maya Sandu, who is on a visit to neighboring Romania, spoke of unprecedented security challenges ahead. And in other news, South Korea will offer radiation testing to 881 North Korean defectors after concerns were raised about their exposure to North Korea's nuclear tests. It comes after a research report warned that residents around Pyongyang, the main nuclear testing site, could be exposed to radioactive leaks in water. The Transitional Justice Working Group estimates that up to half a million residents are at risk. It also potentially affects people in China, South Korea and Japan. Turkey has begun initial work to rebuild homes following this month's devastating earthquakes as the UN Development Program, UNDP, estimated that 1.5 million people have been left homeless. More than 160,000 buildings containing 520,000 apartments collapsed or were severely damaged in the February 6 earthquakes that killed more than 43,500 people in Turkey and nearly 6,000 in neighboring Syria. Facing an election within months, President Tayyip Erdogan has pledged to rebuild homes within a year, although experts have said the authorities should put safety before speed. Some buildings that were meant to withstand tremors crumbled in the latest earthquakes. The UNDP said it had requested 
$113.5 million from the $1 billion in funds appealed for by the United Nations last week, adding that it will focus this money on clearing away mountains of rubbles. You're watching Spring Global and Western Spring Television. We'll be right back after this break. Please stay with us. The 1914 Amalgamation Treaty is synonymous to the birth of Nigeria. Frederick Lugard, a British Army captain and an outlaw who struck gold in Africa became the instrument used by destiny to make it happen. The Amalgamation of Nigeria was designed for economic reasons by the Colonial Administration to offset Northern Protectorate budget deficit by Southern Protectorate surplus returns. The amalgamation had ad initio created imbalance in the economic political structure of Nigeria and was responsible for the persistent hiccups in the efforts to forge a united country till today. Nigeria's amalgamation was labeled as the mistake of 1914 by native northern conservatives who neither wanted it nor contributed anything significant to its sustenance. Western Springer Television identifies with Amalgamation Treaty of 1914 as a watershed event in history. The British Empire was the largest and the most powerful in the world. At its zenith, the empire embraced a quarter of the earth land surface and imposed her imperial majesty's rule on more than 458 million peoples across nations and continents. The empire took off with overseas possessions and trading posts established by England spread over 3 million kilometers between 16th and early 18th century. Like previous empires, the British Empire began to crumble on its weight of overstretched territories and growing unrest in our various colonies. Today, the British Empire no longer exists. What is in place is the Commonwealth of Nations, a loose association of sovereign states which recognize the King of England as the titular head. Western Spring Television identifies the British Empire as a watershed empire in history. Thank you for staying with us and you're welcome back. Into other news, suspected Islamist militants have killed at least 12 people in central Mali's Mopti region. Officials said gunmen burst into a village in Sekel de Bankas, shot at people, burnt homes and then chased those trying to flee into a nearby forest. One official said as many as 19 bodies had been found and the search for more victims was continuing. Last June, an attack in the same area left more than 130 people dead. The region sees frequent raids by jihadist groups linked to Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State group. A Kenyan convicted in a trial linked to the murder of a British man has been freed from prison after a decade-long campaign to overturn his conviction. Jude Tepbert, the wife of the murdered man, says Ali Kololo is innocent. His conviction is expected to be formally overturned in April following an appeal hearing at the Kenyan High Court on Monday. Ali Kolulu has been freed on a bond of $790 ahead of the judgment. Elsewhere, United States billionaire, billionaire financier who helped pioneer the debt field corporate accusation known as the leverage buyout has been found dead. In a statement, Thomas H. Lee's family said they were extremely saddened by the 78-year-old's death. The New York Post reports that he died from a self-inflicted gun wound shirt at his Manhattan office. According to Forbes, Mr. Lee was worth $2 billion at his time of death. 
A police spokesman did not confirm the man had died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound, noting the cause of death will be for a medical examiner to determine. A massive winter storm that brought blizzards and sub-freezing temperatures to much of the United States has left nearly a million households without power. Across five states, homes and businesses have been without power. Over 8,000 U.S. flights were cancelled or delayed yesterday. Meanwhile, other parts of the U.S. experienced unusually warm weather. The hot winter weather is in stark contrast to the cold snap heating Southern California, which is usually warm and sunny year-round. In the meantime, Mozambique's Bira port has been closed as tropical cyclone Freddy approaches the nation's southern region. Bira is the second largest city by size in Mozambique by population and its port sits on the mouth of the Pongui River which runs to Zimbabwe. In a statement, the port operator said all indications point to the probability of the cyclone affecting the city. Operations will resume once the weather condition improves. Schools have been closed in the area, thought to be in high risk, mainly in the coastal provinces of Inhambane and Sofala. Strong winds have been witnessed in areas where the cyclone is expected to make landfall by today. And in the United Kingdom, Sinn Féin's Mitchell O'Neill has condemned the shooting of a senior police officer in Northern Ireland. Speaking at a news conference today, the party's deputy leader said they stand united as one voice in condemnation of the attack on Detective Chief Inspector John Clodwell. Ms. O'Neill was speaking alongside the head of police service Northern Ireland and political representatives from the five main stormout parties, including DUP leader Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, who branded those who carried out the attack as evil. He said his party will work together with other parties to engage with the government to ensure that resources are made available to the police force to carry out its job effectively. It is so important in moments like this that we stand united and we do stand here united as one voice in our condemnation against this horrific attack on a police officer, someone who's part of our community. And I think that the most powerful message that we as political leaders can, stand, can do is to stand with the Chief Constable today, to stand with the police service and to say this is not good enough, this is an attack on all of us, this is an attack on our community. And finally, the only other thing that I would want to say today is that my thoughts very much remain with the family. These are, this is a family who are going through a trauma. These are a family that are sitting at a hospital bed. This is a son who's witnessed his father being attacked in this callous way. So my thoughts are very, very much with John's family today. Security is also a Westminster responsibility. Um, justice is devolved. Security is still dealt with by Westminster. And therefore, we do look to the UK government uh, to honour the commitments they gave a new decade, new approach to help with the funding of uh, the recruitment of police officers. Uh, we heard from the policing board this morning. They continue to sit. They continue to meet. They have a political responsibility as well and continue to exercise that function. So we don't have a vacuum in the sense that the resource can be found, must be found, and the police must have what they need uh, not only uh, to tackle terrorism, but to continue to keep people safe across our community. And turning to Asia, an 11-year-old girl in Cambodia has died from the country's first known human case of bird flu in nine years. Health authorities confirmed that the girl from the rural Preving province was diagnosed with the H5N1 virus on Wednesday. She had fallen ill a week earlier with a high fever, cough and sore throat. Cambodia's health ministry said her father had also tested positive and 11 others had been tested. The girl had been taken from her village to the children's hospital in capital Phnom Penh but died shortly after her diagnosis. Streaming giant Netflix has cut prices in more than 30 countries at its attempts to attract more subscribers. Prices have been cut in parts of Asia, Europe, Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East. It comes as the rising cost of living seas household tightening their belt and Netflix faces increased competition 
from rival services. The courts applied to certain price plans with subscription charges falling by half in some cases. The firm's shares closed 3.4% lower in New York yesterday after the Wall Street Journal first reported the story. Netflix, which operates in more than 190 countries, has faced increased competition from streaming rivals including Amazon, HBO and Disney. To some sports stories, Manchester United will play Real Betis in the Europa League last 16 after overcoming Barcelona, while Arsenal face Sporting Lisbon. United beat the La Liga leaders 2-1 at Old Trafford last night to seal a 4-3 aggregate win in the playoff tie. Arsenal will play the second leg of their tie at home after qualifying as group winners while Manchester United host Betis at Old Trafford first. Elsewhere, six-time winner Sevilla meets Fenerbahce while Jose Mourinho's Roma will play Real Sociedad who top Manchester United's group. The Europa League last 16 ties will take place on the 9th and 16th of March. Let's have a recap of uh, what we can expect in the next round. Uh, Union Berlin taking on Union saint gilloise Sevilla playing Fenerbahce. Juventus taking on Freiburg. Bayer Leverkusen playing Ferenc Varos. Sporting Club Portugal playing Arsenal. Manchester United taking on Real Betis. As Roma playing Real Sociedad and Shakhtar Donetsk uh, facing Feyenoord. Newcastle United midfielder Miguel Almiron has signed a new three-and-a-half-year contract at the club. The Paraguay International joined from MLS side Atlanta United in January 2019 and has made over 150 appearances in all competitions. The 29-year-old is the Magpies' leading goalscorer with 10 goals in 23 Premier League games this season. Before we end Spring Global, here is a recap of our top stories. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has suspended election in Enugu East Senatorial District following the murder of Labour Party Senatorial candidate for the district, Oyibo Chuku. And Poland has delivered the first four Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine and Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki says the country will send more soon. Suspected Islamist militants have killed at least 12 people in central Mali's Mopti region. You can follow us on our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Western Spring Television. You can also watch us live on our YouTube channel at Western Spring Television. I am Sunday Ido. Good evening.